Welcome to The Old City, Leviathan. This is an exploration game set in a decaying city from a civilization long past. The creators describe it as a game that focuses heavily on the narrative, with everything else being secondary. They even say it contains a 30,000 word novella, so they're pretty serious when they say it's narratively focused. You can grab it from Steam, and I'll have a link to that in the description. I've played it for about 20 minutes so far, and I am intrigued. So let's go ahead and begin a new game. Hello again. I guess it's time for us to chat, as is our routine. Not to imply that this is unwanted. In fact, I think I'm growing rather fond of you. <laughs> hmm. You and I have shared a grand nothingness, and I feel as though your belly is a suitable embassy amidst the unknown above. So here we go. I am, I think, inside of the decaying city. Or, I think actually underneath it. As you can see, I'm basically living in a leaky basement sewer place. Not exactly the best or cleanest living conditions. It's like a map of the whole place. And apparently, I'm quite the writer. There's a lot of notes and a lot of typewriters around. Alright, so let's give these notes a read. They start here and they continue on over there. I'm not really sure why he just plastered them on the wall like posters, but... Nonetheless, let's read them. 31st of January. I often wonder how many times I've woken up to greet you. Hundreds, if not thousands of days have gone by, surely. I can't believe you had not shown him to me. Solomon, my dear Solomon, yes. I met him near the south side of this facility. We had a wonderful chat, and I don't want you to feel jealous. A friendship between us would never develop to eclipse my friendship with you, as he distanced himself from me after mentioning a woman named Bella. The poor fellow was unable to rid his mind of her. Some long-lost friend from an older time, I think. I'm glad I'll never lose you, Leviathan. Our relationship is a special one. Second of February. He said something about moving north towards happiness and contentment. I get the sense that this was simply sarcasm, but that often gives way to an actual desire. I do hope he finds what he's looking for. After all, he is making an effort to explore. That's more than I can say for the other Minotaurs down here. The one whose residence is near the dumping point for the clean water was bad enough, but the new one, this Moses character, does nothing but whine about his precious dwellers and their unwillingness to move. Where's your movement, Moses? To be fair, he did leave the other day. He said he was meeting with the Order Camp somewhere north. 5th of February. He's back. Not Solomon, no. The other one. Moses, just down the way. It's so hard to keep track of all the Minotaurs these days. Ah, but I'm sure you know them all. You are a perceptive one, aren't you? Anyway, he's back and I feel compelled to go and meet him again. I'm quite the social butterfly, I'll have you know. 
Granted, whenever I attempt dialogue, I usually get the same tired story about how insane I am or some other nonsense. Moses doesn't like me. He had the nerve to say that you don't exist. He said that I'm some idiot bumbling around spewing my mind to you. Well, Moses, I'm no fan of your work either. 7th of February. The fool. He's made the switch. At least, that's what they say. I made the switch once, and my mind has never fully recovered. I embraced Void, but I resurfaced quickly enough to survive. Why have you done this, Moses? Why have you dived into uselessness? After I switched to the unclean water, I began to see the world for what it could be. The vasts of nothingness. I can only rely on you to unveil reality again, Leviathan. You must show me what they have done, and what this place is, lest I implode in my own abyss. 15th of April. He's gone. No longer will he exist as a parasite in your belly. He has made his escape, his journey to, to Tarshish, and I cannot help but feel as though he is brave in doing so. On the other hand, here I sit, alone, with nothing to show for myself. I have become static. I sit here consuming the supplies from the old city, never even considering what the sources might hold. Shall I continue to rot? Perhaps I should drink of the unclean water again. After all, if I'm useless, there's no reason not to dissolve. No. I will continue. I will cling to sanity like a man lost in his hope, and I will cling to your innards like the parasitic worm I am. 30th of November. It has been long enough. I have wasted away being useless for enough time to see that there must be a change. Tomorrow, Leviathan. Tomorrow I will make my journey. I will reach the surface, and I will find the old city. I will find the sources. Jonah. 30th of November. So that is me, I think. I mean, it, it did say at the very beginning of the game that I'm being put inside of a mind that I can't exactly trust. So who actually knows, but it would appear that I am Jonah, and I am on a quest for the old city. To find the sources. Yeah, I sit here consuming the supplies from the old city, never even considering what the sources might hold. So... I'm consuming supplies from the old city, but I don't know what's actually there at the old city. I've never actually seen the sources. I guess we'll find out. Hopefully. I wonder what's there. Obviously, some things are left alive. I mean, I'm alive, and there's apparently other people. Even if almost everything is dead. It's very strange, though, how Jonah describes himself, saying he'll cling to sanity like a man lost in his hope. Cling to your innards like the parasitic worm I am. The innards. The innards of what? I don't... F I get the feeling that he's not talking about a literal thing. But he keeps mentioning Leviathan, which is, at least traditionally, some sort of gigantic sea monster. And I seriously doubt I'm literally in the innards of a sea monster, so... That must be more metaphorical, I think. I guess we'll find out. Maybe. Also, there's gross dead rats everywhere. Even better reason to move. Because this is not sanitary. At least my bed actually doesn't look too bad. Alright, let's go. That symbol is basically the symbol of death. At least that's what it means to me. So I think that symbol means residence, which if you look at the map, there's one other residences, residency noted. I think... Where am I on this map? I must be up there. Yeah, I'm all the way in the top.
Ah, look at those particles of dust. Beautiful. I think they even, yeah, they even have like volumetric light on the particles of dust. Can you see it? And there's that symbol again. Unauthorized personnel keep out. Old City Source Overflow Outlet. These are strange barrels. So bright red and with that weird eye symbol on them. Do you want me here? I know the question must seem odd, if not insulting, but I really must ask. You seem distant as of late. Okay, that text just changed when I got near, and now it won't change back. I don't know what it said before, but I'm curious. I want to say it didn't look like English. I don't know if it was nonsense or just a different language. Hmm. Weird. Follow the water. G-U-O. It's the same letters that were back where I first started. Those, uh, handles. Yeah, it sounds like, um... It sounds like Jonah's talking about just the place where I live. Just the place in general. You seem distant as of late. I get the feeling he's just talking about where he lives. As if it's a person. He's anthropomorph... What's the word? Anthropomorphizing? Anthropomorphizes? I can't quite remember it. Something like that. Okay, so I need to keep an eye on text, just in case it changes when I get near. Water source main, sewer main. Symbols again. More and more eyes. Is that sunlight or just light from a light bulb? underground, then that can't possibly be sunlight. Admittedly, and please do not take offense, your inerts sometimes frighten me. Even in the complete safety of a belly unto myself, there are places like this that I do not want to know. Yeah, your innards sometimes frighten me, places like this. So yeah, he's talking about just this place. The city, or the sewer, or... everything, I'm not sure. Hmm, which way? Let's see what's down here. Okay, I'm gonna look at that text. I'm. It looks like nonsense, and I suspect it's gonna change when I get near. So right now, what does it say? Um. 
Is that an A? It's kind of missing the thing that would actually make it an A. Add font. Font something. I don't know. Let's see what happens when I get near. I wonder if the dwellers would cluster together like rats if they really understood the true value of isolation. All of their pathetic little wars and ridiculous assumptions of superiority would be washed away if they all had their own private labyrinths to roam around in. Granted, they could never understand the importance of the individual, the megalomania of justice in the guild, order, and, yes, even the unknowing. It's far too strong. There really is no point in even attempting dialogue. The guild, the order. So there's different factions that arose after mankind broke down? It sounds like. Okay, so let's see if this text changes. Ah, it did. Oh, it actually changes back now. Oh. Okay, so there's... You can get close enough that it will change back and forth, but if you get too close, it permanently changes over. That's very strange. I wonder what that means. Disease. That's all I can think of when I see dead rats. Disease. And then I think of Dishonored and the Black Plague. I believe this game does have secrets of some sort, by the way. I'd like to find them. And there's the symbol again. I can go down, but first, what's over here? Oh, this is the other residence. Somebody lives here? Or did? As a child, before the lots were cast, my parents moved around a great deal. The state of motion was not constant, of course, but it was frequent. Honestly, I loved the newness of it. I loved feeling like a sculpture, clay added over and over, but with an artist always ready to carve from my form that which I did not require, continually reshaping my psychology. Bags in front of me during the unfortunately early hours before departure. They seem to decrease in number with each successive voyage. It's always eerie the way that when structures that have been built by mankind, when they've been left for a while, the way nature kind of just encroaches and it starts to slowly take it back, starts to fall apart, and vines start to come through. And I don't know what the hell happened here. Normally rocks don't poke their way through, but maybe there was a... I don't even know. There's another typewriter. I'm trying to use these, by the way. I cannot. Oh god, I'm stuck on the ball. Okay. I'm okay. The old city. Water treatment. Okay, so that's where we are. So what is that pathway? Is that the, the route they took? A safe route? What is that? 
It must signify something, but I don't know what. Hmm. And it says subway access over here, and then there's a dotted line that kind of goes, I'm assuming underneath and through the old city. And it looks like it comes up around docks too. Let's see what they wrote. Huh. There's no dates on these, just the note number. Note number 784. It's funny, isn't it? Months into travel and at the end of it, I'm left with absolutely nothing. They told me that I should seek out the water treatment facility on this northwestern portion of the island. They told me that, if I found it, I would be met with a conglomerate endeavor to reach the inland. I was told that the Order and the other enemies of the Guild would not interfere with our attempts at progress. No one ever told me that the conglomerate endeavor in question was simply the continuation of the same pointless struggle against nothingness. Number 785. I suppose this is my punishment for assuming movement has any worth. Miles and miles I ventured. All of this time spent. All of this pain endured. And here I sit with nothing to show for it but a dirty old mattress and a stagnant mind. That's the best part of it all, really. The best part is that I haven't changed. I'm the same idiot stumbling around in a fallen world that I was years past. Luckily, now that death is finding me like an old lover, rejected yet loyal, it doesn't matter that the dwellers don't seem to be concerned with the inland. Then again, why would they be concerned? Why would they want to find meaning? A meaning that the old city must provide, if they already have their own. What need would there be for change? I'm so horribly idiotic, aren't I? I should have seen it. No matter. It's about to be over, thankfully. And this pathetic waste of a life won't be here to trouble anyone anymore. Onward with your endeavors, then, dwellers. I'm sure you'll make headway with your enemies someday. Surely it won't result in the continuation of an infinite conflict that will never be resolved. Surely. By the greater eye, what a fucking joke it all is. I met a local minotaur named Jonah. He's a friendly reminder of sanity's fragility. Drank from the unclean water, no doubt. In speech he seems normal, until a point. And that point is his dive into the bazaar. I would call it pretentious if it wasn't so obviously born of pure insanity. I guess I can't complain, as it's far better than the nonsense I hear from the guild. At least Jonah doesn't make weightless promises of inland ventures. No, he's firmly planted in this place. As if stuck in a loop, he keeps returning to vague memories of his childhood as if they can protect him. In the middle of a thought, he'll bring it back, back from void, just to make everything seem safe. Okay, there's some really important information in here. This, wow, there's a lot. Just in these few notes. As if stuck in a loop, he keeps returning to vague memories of his childhood as if they can protect him. He'll bring it back from the void just to make everything seem safe. As in... Hallucinations? He starts to imagine familiar territory so that he's comfortable again? Of course, that immediately, immediately leaves me to wondering whether any of this is actually real. Also, there's a lot going in here, uh, going on here with these different factions, the Dwellers and the Guild. It sounded like they're trying to hunt down the Dwellers. Where did it say that? I think it said it's somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where. Oh, oh, I was told that the Order and the other enemies of the Guild would not interfere with our attempts at progress. Okay, well, maybe not the Dwellers, but the Order apparently is an enemy of the Guild. Whoops. <laughs> I'm just jumping up and down on a bunch of mushrooms. Totally normal. 
And it sounds like there's actually a significant amount of life in other places. Like this, so it sounds like this is just an abandoned place. It's not like the entire world is dead. It's just that this place is dead. And apparently I'm one of the few people that actually still lives here. Hmm. Interesting. Wait. Oh, I haven't gone this way yet. Hey! I found a thing I can interact with. Whoa. This is pretty. Is this... Oh, this has to be a memory from Jonah's childhood, right? This has got to be. My father showed me, in the heavens, Ziz flies. His wings like the clouds, he darkens the skies. Still, Behemoth is roaming, in his desert unknown. The dunes reaching forward, where no seed is sown. Under these beasts, neath the depths of abyss, Leviathan's creeping, Sheol's prin prince of dis. Abba guided me onward, by the strength of his hand. I let slip between my fingers, my grasp of the sand. He wondered, curious, do you know where you are? Indeed I did not. All I could see was the blue. I told him, plainly, does it matter? I'm right here with you. So this whole sea monster thing is obviously a reoccurring theme. The Leviathan. And in the very beginning of the game, almost, like, the, the sound that was playing when the screen was black and the game started, sounded like water and maybe the deep groaning of some sort of beast. Some sort of underwater beast. Look at the squid. It's so happy. Not a care in the world. Who would have a care in the world when he had so many damn arms? Think of all the things you could do with... How many arms is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight? That'd be so awesome to have eight arms. Whoa. What the hell is this? Am I hallucinating or is it getting closer? Okay, I'm hallucinating. Okay, I'm going towards the light. I don't think you're supposed to do that. I shouldn't be here. No. No, I don't think I should. I kind of want to keep going, though. What have I done? This almost looks like a castle of some sort.
like they were turned to stone mid-meal. Please. I cannot swim this deep. Let me out. Please. Certitude, I think that says, of the ancients comes with a new coat, annihilating those deemed anachronistic. Indeed, Dover runs red. Whoa! There's a person there. They're long dead. Are the notes any different? No. Does that mean his mind was covering this up? He didn't want to confront that, so he just was blanking it out and pretending this is... You know, no one was dead here. And now I've done something to open him up. I made him kind of confront a little bit of it. And it's kind of peeled away a layer. That must be the person that, that wrote these notes that said they're going to die. Oh, wait. I forgot to go down here. Pigs waste what is not swill. Residence 13, maintenance or water source. Let's go to the next residence. Oh. There's another body. See, when I played this before, when I... I said I played this for about 20 minutes before. And I did come in here before, and there was not a body, so... Uh, that body appeared because of the stuff I did downstairs. Would you be angry with me if I removed his work? I'm not exactly a fan. Uh, before I assumed this portion of your stomach, he existed as a parasite, eating away at your flesh before making his escape. I'm told that he refused to accept the sustenance you haul in from the outside. Some say he went insane 
after attempting to live off of the unclean water. <sighs> Poor fool. Another different route marked on this map. Everybody has their own map. Alright, there's a water treatment. Subway access. Yeah, their pathway is, is different. What does it mean? Were they visited safe routes? I don't know. Alright. January, so it looks like it starts from the left. Yeah. January 24th, entry 1. This endeavor is new to me, but I suppose no other of my kind has written a journal of their discoveries. At least, none that I've read. Why is that, I wonder? Why do the others, though spread thin in this hellhole, prefer talking to themselves aimlessly and without end? They wander in the dark, spewing their mind as if the walls themselves were engaging them. Oh, wait a minute, this has to be, um, Moses, right? Yeah, because Jonah's writings said that Moses talked about him spewing his mind, right? And that's exactly what he referred to referred to here. Yeah, spewing in the dark, spewing their minds as if the walls themselves were engaging them. No matter. The walls will not hear my thoughts. No. My thoughts are for you, reader. Whoever you are. I met with the order camp near the downed subway car today. It is always interesting how they, and the others down here, have taken to living in our collective filth. Though I suppose the grass is always greener only when you can see the other side. If I can plan some sort of coordinated effort to get to the surface, I think we can travel much faster. What we need is a rigid system in cooperation. Back when I was dubbed Minotaur by the Council of Mod Modernity, Okay, let's stop again. Yeah, they kept referring to people as minotaurs. Which confused me, because I, I didn't think they literally meant minotaurs, so it must mean something else. And that is assigned to you by the Council of Mod... Mod... Moderni modernity. That's weird. And that note that looked like it was scribbled in blood on the wall after I saw that vision did mention the... What was the exact word? I don't know, the the antiquated... Something about, like, killing off the antiquated people or the antiquated things, the old things. Anyway. Back when I was dubbed Minotaur by the Council of Modernity, I assumed the title granted me at least a modicum of authority over logistical affairs. This doesn't appear to be the case with the Order Camp, however, as they've rejected me outright. The title seems to distance me from them, Sometimes I feel as though the council is no better than the rabble of primids that they combated. The primids themselves are almost entirely eliminated, but our current populace is just as stubborn and unwilling to challenge their current status. Today, I decided to use a different tactic than I have used before. Instead of pulling rank, I opted to use reason. As common dwellers, we are all aware that our supply of water and food is largely provided by the old city. It is clear that this entire supply is simply the leftovers of a much larger meal, a hand-me-down from some other entity in a much better financial situation. While this free sustenance is appreciated, wouldn't you rather find the source? Apparently, I alone have that sentiment. I will try harder. It has been a week since my last entry. I've tried everything. These people are intolerable. I've tried, I've tried every measure of reason to no avail. They'd rather drink the old city's charity water than find its fountain. I don't know how much longer I can take this. Every time I give a reason to escape this underground purgatory, it becomes more evident to myself how badly I personally need to get out. And every time they refuse, it becomes more obvious how hopeless this situation really is. This is really intriguing. This is really intriguing. There's obviously a lot of depth here. There's a lot of stuff going on.
Militars. Okay, so this is something that I found when I was playing for about 20 minutes before as well. Solomon's Note. So that's kind of a little secret collect... It, eh, I'm not sure if I want to call it a collectible. But it is something that you can access from the menu. There are apparently seven of them. I'm assuming there's one for each chapter. And I think this is what the creators meant when they said that it contains a 30,000 word novella. Because if you look at the first part of this, just, uh, just, just look at how long this is. Yeah. Okay, so I need to talk about this for a couple minutes. Normally I read notes. I typically read almost all notes in games. However, this one is really, really, really long. To the point where I think it would literally take me probably 20 or more minutes to read this. That's really long. And if I didn't care about the game, or I didn't think it was worth reading, I wouldn't read it. However, this is a, this is a very narratively focused game, and I'm really intrigued by the story behind everything. So I do actually want to read this. But, it's so ridiculously long that I don't feel like it... I feel like it... If I just read it outright, right now, it's, it's just going to balloon out to a huge episode, and I know some people... Maybe most people wouldn't want to read this. So I think I've come up with a solution that kind of works well for everybody. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of reading this in the main episode, what I'm actually going to do is read this in a separate little video. So every time in the main game that I encounter one of these notes, one of these massive notes, which are, well, I think note kind of falls a little bit short, more like a snippet from a novella. So every time I encounter one of these, uh, the video where I encountered it will also have an accompanying video where I read out the entire thing. So basically I'm just going to split it off into a separate video. So if you don't want to read it, you can just ignore that video and continue watching this one. And if you do want to read it, then you can pause and then go watch the video. So let's do that right about now. So if you do not want to read this, then just continue watching. If you do want to read this, then pause the video right about now and go watch my accompanying video. Okay, I just finished reading this extremely long thing that actually, I thought it was going to take me about 20 minutes, but it actually took me about 40, I think. And if you join me for that, then I hope you enjoyed it. If you did not, then I have to say, after having just read it, I really enjoyed it. It was really, 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 really good. It was really engaging and extremely well written, and it was just good as a standalone piece of of writing. I think even if it wasn't in the game, I would actually want to read it. So, if you're even slightly interested, I would recommend checking it out. I really enjoyed it. Okay, so there's a couple things I want to touch on in it, regardless of whether you actually uh, watch the video of me reading through it or not. And that's that... The guy mentions a couple things in this very room itself. In fact, a bunch of stuff. So he mentions that you should be aware of my storeroom. There's a floor panel in the middle of this upper room that acts as a door to the basement, or to a basement. And then there's also something even further down. Where is it? Oh. Yes, I forgot to mention something. Um, let's see. It's his most prized possession. So apparently there's a hidden dictionary. And it is above his desk, just below the wooden trim that remains on the ceiling. You'll see a hole covered by some stretched leather from an old glove. So there's something hidden in there. There's a, a storeroom door in the center of the room. So it mentions a couple things, and I'm pretty sure it's talking about this room itself. Because, you know, I got it from in here, and I believe this is the author. But the thing is, I don't actually know if it is. Because when I played this before, for about 20 minutes, I did read a little bit of that note, 
enough to see the mention of the storeroom and the, uh, the hole above his desk. And I don't see any of it. I don't see any central entrance to a basement in this room. Something just under the wooden trim, a uh, hole? I don't see any hole. I can't get up there anymore. I don't see a hole, certainly not one I can reach. And he mentioned ink and like pens in the drawers of his desk. And if you look at this desk, it doesn't even have any freaking drawers. So. I believe what that means is that either the writing is not entirely reflected in the world and maybe that's a bit of a mistake, or maybe this isn't the room. I'm almost certain it's the room, though. He even mentioned that um, the the wall opposite the typewriter is brick, and if you look through it, you can find some holes to look out into the outside world. And, well, I mean, it is a brick wall, but I don't see any holes. At least none that I can look out of. And he mentioned a, a library, too, that he had, like, a little metal shelf that had some books on it. There certainly isn't one there. Are there any books here? No, there's no books. Okay, so I don't think this is actually his room. Or something weird is going on, because none of the stuff he describes is really actually here. But yeah, that was a really good piece of writing. That was exceptional. Okay, uh, where did I come from? I, oh, I came, yeah, I came up that ladder. So I went to the right, that's explore, that's the exit. I believe that's where I go to end the chapter. So let's go left. Wait, I think I've been here. Oh, I think I was here last time I played, not, not during this playthrough. Lots of jugs and stuff. Looks like people were filling up with water here. I wonder if this is clean water or the dirty water, though. Can I climb this ladder by any chance? Nah. I want to find the books that he mentioned. The stuff above the typewriter. That's the exit, isn't it? It is. Okay, um, let me go check something real quick before I continue. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I just went back to the starting area. What I believe is Jonah's room, just to see if maybe the book was talking about his room. But it appears it was not. The desk, just like Moses' desk, does not have any drawers. There was no hole. Uh, no metal shelf full of books or anything like that. So, yeah. I'm not sure what's up with that. I think that's... Yeah, that's the way to go to actually go to the exit. What's here? Oh, it's just the other... Yeah. Just the other side of this thing. No smoking. <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny now for some reason. Shall I ascend to your lungs and feel your breath? I think that would be lovely. <laughs>
Okay, well, I think I will end this episode here. I believe this game... Well, I know it doesn't have a save anywhere function. And I believe it actually only saves at the beginning of chapters. Which, as you just saw, for me, at least after doing the reading of the little snippet from the novella, was actually about an hour and a half. Or maybe even more. So there's a very, very long distance between the saves. At least, depending on how fast you go. So anything I do from here on out will be completely wasted if I don't make it to the next chapter. So, I think I'll just stand my ground in the elevator. The elevator. So yeah, uh, my thoughts so far. This is a really intriguing game. It's a narratively focused game, which means that uh, how interesting it, in, it is is incredibly dependent on the quality of the writing. Because if the writing falls flat, then the entire thing falls flat, because there's really not much else to fall back on. Thankfully, though, so far the writing seems really good. Really, really good. It's intriguing, it obviously has a lot of depth to it. And I'm really looking forward to see where the story goes in it, and to kind of flesh the world out some more. So I'm very intrigued. And by the way, there might be a significant... Uh, distance between when I get episodes for this series out because I can already tell right now my voice doesn't feel great after that because reading that story for about 40 minutes straight just <laughs> man that takes a lot out of me I don't know how people that make audiobooks I don't know how they do it like I don't know if they just do the recording in 30 minute sessions or if they're all freaking day but I don't know maybe I just need to get better control of my voice but after reading for 40 minutes straight whoo I feel exhausted and my voice feels all tight and not terribly comfortable. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect an episode, say, every other day. It's, it's probably going to be more spaced out than that. But at the moment, I'm definitely intrigued and I definitely intend to keep playing. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.